Miss Min, I'm so glad to be back and talking about this topic, which is so coincidental. I'll tell you why later. Why? Oh, okay. Um, uh, I, I can't wait to hear that story. But first up, I mean, just that whole relationship between seniors and smartphones and the possible addiction that comes to it. What do you make of it? We all are very prone to being addicted to something, right? So even like the working adults can be addicted to their phone. So when seniors have that avenue, they can get a little bit obsessive with it. And if we think about it, if that is the only outlet that they have and they are isolated at home, um, in the past, it would be that TV screen. So now it has downsized into that little screen and that little screen can do so much more. So I think it's teaching them how to use it in a productive and healthy manner. Is Candy Crush productive? <laughs> Well, it helps to while away the time. So one of the things that we often encourage the, the uh, seniors to have is what are the apps on your phone, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. if there are only games on your phone, can we introduce other apps on your phone? Um, and we want to cover different, uh, different things. So connecting with their friends, you know, um, maybe learning something new. So you want to expand and have them explore a little bit more um, what they can do with their phones and their applications on their phones because sometimes they're not familiar and they only know Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where family members have more. to do, this is where family members, maybe the younger ones, have to do a forensic check on grandma yes. or grandpa's phone and then try to weed out the bad apps and put in better ones as well so that they're more mindfully engaged. Well, yeah, so, so you know, there are so many different things that we can do on our phones. I mean, they don't have to, to um, worry about many other things. So what they, they need to do is to keep them brains stimulated, their brains excited. And I think it's up to us to teach them how to keep them stimulated, even on that small device, so that when they are on that device, they are not only on um, maybe their, their shows or on a game and one particular game. Yeah. So Dr. Tan, let's go back to why you were so excited about this topic and you say you feel passionately yes. about it. Do you have a personal example? I, because it was so um, interesting that when um, the request came to, to come on air, really, really honored to come on air with you, um, the, it, it coincided with our, uh, my, my uh, team. We are doing something for the seniors mm -hmm. this afternoon. Oh, wow. And, what? Um, yeah, yes. So, you know, I, I always say that, you know, you, the, how do we bring this idea that psychologists, or coming for mental well-being sessions are not scary. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, I've been talking so much about it. Why not do something about it? So today, for the first time, uh, is a, a therapy room initiative with Yong An Elder Care Center. We are doing a mental health check up for the seniors okay. and it's going to be a six monthly mental health checkup so so exciting is and it's going to be virtual it's going to be virtual it's okay. going to be virtual so we are talking about you know the use of the devices many of these seniors have been taught how to use um the zoom mm -hmm. on the devices and they will be connecting with us virtually while we do a mental health screening for each one of them and how do you prepare for mental health screening for seniors apart from maybe brushing up on language dialect <laughs> things like that the questions you ask are they different from the ones that you are say the younger age groups we have a battery so being psychologists we have a lot of different surveys uh, we we have a, a set a battery of surveys to do with them so we will have standardized questions to check in with them at the end of it they will get a score or we will know their score and then it will be reflected back to the uh, uh, elder care workers who would then follow up with them Okay, fantastic. Well, good luck with that. It sounds really exciting and I think uh, 
it's nice that you know you're contributing to the great mental health of seniors in this country and you know to take care of them and thank them for all their contributions it's an amazing thing so Dr. Mm-hmm. Tan on top of your job as a psychologist you're also yes. working with a few organizations to conduct critical incident stress management so what is all that about? CISM so sometimes sometimes when um, an event happens that is very sudden very unexpected and um, extremely shocking uh, the the whole entire team or the organization or the space or even a nation can go into shock and and there would be trauma they don't know what to do so people might not know what to do that's when we go in and we work with them we process it with them so that some level of functioning can occur and start to resource them to different areas all right fantastic i hope that initiative's going well we're going to take a break here and talk about mental health and perhaps the stigma around it and your ideas on how to reduce that so we still need you please hold on dr geraldine tan is director and principal psychologist at the therapy room i'm yasmin yonkers for the double x files let's go to the topic about mental health and the stigma around it let's get the thoughts of geraldine tan she's dr geraldine tan by the way director and principal psychologist at the therapy room dr tan i know this is a big thing for you uh, in july education minister dr chan chin singh said we should not stigmatize those who come forward to seek help you're a big believer about this as well talk to us about this Yes, I I think the whole idea about only when you're sick, you go to the psychologist or to go to a doctor. I am um, wanting to break that and I want everyone to come in for a six monthly review. You know, just like how you go for your medical checkup, you go for your dental health checkup. It should, it should be the same for your mental health also. Um, and, you know, we shouldn't be afraid to talk about it. So the more we hide, the more repressed, you know, our emotions are, um, it will come out some way, somehow, in not a very pretty manner. Mm, yeah, the stigma. Let's not put it. Let's not put it down. Yeah. What are some of the misconceptions that people have about mental health? Um, that you know, uh, those with uh, those that have a diagnosis are crazy. That's not true. It can happen to anyone and it is like a cough and cold, you know, it is not uh, contagious because many people think if I hang out with this person, will I also get the disease? Like no, COVID. there's no disease. <laughs> No, it doesn't happen that way. Um, Other things would be, you know, uh, parents, I hear parents saying don't hang out with certain children because uh, they they are not good influence, especially if someone actually is really down and very um, heavy, their moods are very heavy. You know, you hear parents dragging their children away from this particular child, which is very, very sad. All those with special needs, they think that, you know, the, the special needs children have a disease that, you know, um, and, and, and should be kind of isolated, which is not true. I wonder where these, I don't know, rumors come from. Well, I think it's because um, if we don't understand what it is, mm-hmm. we tend to be very frightened. We tend to be very scared of the unknown. So talking more about it brings more awareness and we are not so afraid. So if you see a child that is autistic um, and you had, uh, you don't know what it is, you might think that child is violent, which is not true. Uh, you might think the child would um, not understand you. That is not true. They just need to have a gentle hand be spoken to in a different way and they are able to uh, you know, follow your instructions. Dr. Tan, how much has the pandemic put a strain on your industry, people who practice psychology? And do we have enough budding psychologists here in Singapore? Is there going to be enough in the future once we all embrace the story of mental health and want to see people like you? Well, thank you for asking that question because um, I think the the 
pandemic that is so long drawn has taken a toll on many of my colleagues and they are very, very tired. I mean, our case loads have exponentially increased um, and being in the helping profession, we still want to help. So many of these, uh, many of my colleagues are really, really tired. Uh, and do we have enough people? I think we have enough. I think we're just riding the storm all together. And I'm so glad that so many people are so supportive of us. So that really helps. And I'm asking about people who want to get trained, perhaps, to enter this field because they feel motivated to help not just those who are having issues now, but uh, mm -hmm. down the road in the mm -hmm. future. Do you see a, a big yeah. interest in younger people or people wanting to switch careers into psychology? There have been and it's been uh, already a trend for the last, you know, five, ten years. Uh, now, because of the pandemic, there is even more interest in uh, psychology, which is wonderful. It is a very exciting field. Um, I, I cannot get enough of it. Uh, my team also cannot get enough of it, although we are very, very tired. Um, there are many avenues to uh, learn psychology now. It's not just in the universities, in the polys, you, you do have them um, and then so there are different routes to get to where we are uh, get to you know being a psychologist and how much should one expect to pay if they're going to see a mental health practitioner for the first time mm. perhaps I think that entry level and that whole unknown is what prevents people from actually making the first step sometimes yeah um, a very good question. It, it, it is a range, really. So um, I think there is uh, the subsidized rates in the family service centers or in the hospitals, and they can be as um, uh, little as perhaps forty dollars, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the private sector, it can go up to two, three hundred dollars. Um, but but because we are in the helping profession, please just reach out to the psychologist and ask if they have, you know, a, a lower rate or tell them your budget. Uh, they would be able to direct you to the right people or if they can accommodate, they would be able to fit your budget. So don't be shy. The important thing is to reach out and obtain help first. And if your budget is low, are you to expect less care? No, <laughs> no, 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 that's absolutely not how we operate here. Um, so all care will be equal across. Um, and, you know, if let's say you are in a, a you go to an organization where you have to pay less. It doesn't mean that your care is less or the quality is poorer. It just means that they have more funding or they have more ability to give it give you at a lower rate. Even when you come to my center and you you state your budget and we are able to match that, uh, it doesn't mean that we give you any less care because we understand that you are um, really trying to help yourself and we will journey with you no matter what. Dr. Tan, it's PSLE period. I mean, today the math yeah. papers and then of course Monday you get the languages and then you get science and all that. It's a stressful, you know, weekend uh, ahead. Do you have a practical yeah. quick exercise that parents, moms and their kids can do to actually help them tide through these rough couple of days? Yeah, so I, I will have a, uh, uh, said it many times in, in different platforms, but um, I usually encourage the parents to listen to what the children need or ask them what they need because sometimes we bug them too much. Um, remember to sleep early, hydrate, eat well. I know many of the kids would want some junk food, but I think it's important to build up immunity during this period of time. Does that I mean supplements as well? Mm, some of them are already taking supplements, but mm. if you're not taking, you know, I would not recommend immediately jumping into one because we don't know how the body would react during this period. So just really plain good old water would uh, really suffice or, you know, vitamin C. Yeah, I like uh, that. that would really be helpful. And guess what? We've mm. also crossed into the final quarter of the year. So any advice to take yes. us through to 2022? I'm a little exhausted. I know, I know. And in my time, I'm not sure how old you are, but in my time, 
Children's Day is on the first of October. Yes. And I think on the first of October. So I've told my team, and I'll share it with everyone. Um, what one of my my kind of a working principle is, and I wrote to them a little bit of wonder, a little bit of magic, and a lot of adventure. Uh-huh. So let's nod on to the end of the year and see uh-huh. what adventures we can find. <laughs> On that note, we wrap up the Double X Files week. You've been a joy. Thank you so much, Dr. Gerald. The entire Thank for all you, the tips me. and the wisdom. Enjoy, you know, your afternoon with the seniors, uh, director and principal psychologist at the Therapy Room.